This is CBS 6 News in high definition. Bitter blast. 78 million people preparing right now for winter storm Hercules. And the snow is knocking on our doorstep. Good evening, I'm Liz Bishop. And I'm Dory Marlin. Jerry Gretzinger is off tonight. We do start here with a winter weather alert. We're going to start by showing you a quick look outside at the roads and uh, can pretty much be described as the calm before the storm here this evening. First up, this is uh, I-787 at exit 9, Route 7 there. Of course, a busy travel area typically at this hour. Things, again, pretty quiet at this hour, though. All right, we'll head a little north now. This is the north way at exit 9 in Clifton Park. And... Uh, not many cars on the road at all. They don't look bad. And we know, though, that that is going to change. And Chief Meteorologist Steve LaPointe is here now to tell us just how much snow we can expect and when it will start to pile up. Steve? All right, Liz. Yeah, pretty quiet out there this evening. We do have some patches of uh, flurries, essentially, down here across the Catskills and the Mid-Hudson Valley. And this is really just the beginning. It will basically be just flurries through the evening hours. I don't expect things to really start kicking in until after midnight, maybe even 1, 2 o'clock. But as we've been saying, over a prolonged period of time, from later tonight right through Friday morning, this will be a heavy accumulation of snow. We're still targeting a general widespread 8 to 12 inch snow accumulation. And there will likely be some of these smaller scale features that typically do set up, especially in these longer duration events, that could produce some localized pockets of enhanced snowfall. So there will be a few spots coming in maybe as high as 15, although it's impossible to really determine where those spots will be until we actually see it happening. So a pretty hefty snow uh, fall, but again spread out over a long period of time. Uh, travel conditions will be pretty nasty because of the cold and the fact that the melting agents just will not be as effective and I think we'll be dealing with some downright dangerous wind chills here by Thursday night and Friday as well. Right now temperature 21 so not so cold but we'll start to see a decline this evening 16 with just some flurries around again the snow starts to get going after midnight about five for the low I'm thinking about a two to four inch snow accumulation by nine to ten o'clock tomorrow morning and it will just continue to snow mostly lightly through the day tomorrow with increasing wind it's a bitterly cold snow as well, Liz, with highs tomorrow no better than about 10. And Steve, you're talking about those melting agents. Word is of the storm sent people scurrying today. They're out trying to get supplies for it. We stopped by Lowe's along Central Avenue in Colony to see just what people were stocking up on. The store is selling a lot of salt and snow throwers today. And we talked to the assistant manager who broke down the best types of salt you can buy for your driveway. That's both cost effective and safe for your pets. If you're looking for something that's uh, animal safe, things of that nature, you want to go with like a, um, um, we have specific melts. It's a Blizzard Wizard ice melt. Um, it's uh, one of the more pet friendlier uh, compounds. If you're just going with plain rock salt, that's really not too good. So if you have pets around, uh, rock salt, however, is the least expensive and it is very effective. It's the same thing they use on the roads to, to get all the ice and stuff off the roads. And then we have calcium chloride. It tends to work a little bit better in really, really cold conditions and uh, melts a little bit quicker and a little bit more effective. However, it's a little, uh, a little bit more expensive. And he went on to say that they have plenty of winter supplies left in stock, but if they were to run out, they have an emergency plan in place so that they can restock quickly. And that bitter cold that's heading our way already has made its impact to our north and west. Check out this photo that was taken in Minneapolis. So cold there today that a waterfall in one of the city parks there has actually frozen completely solid. Check that out. People at that park today say that they're going to rename the falls as the Ice Falls. That's, of course, in honor of today's cold. The Twin Cities saw temperatures drop to about 7 degrees below zero this morning. And you can almost feel the cold in Winnipeg, Canada, just by watching this video here. Temperatures there this week reached double digits below zero. In fact, it was 31 degrees below zero when this video was shot. Last month was the coldest December in the city in the past 100 years. Now, to help uh, keep you on top of the weather as the storm is rolling in, be sure to join our meteorologist Nick Johnston tomorrow morning for a live Facebook chat. He's going to be answering any questions that you might have about the storm as it heads our way. That's going to be between 10 and 11 tomorrow morning. You can just head to Facebook.com slash CBS 6 Albany. And a couple of areas have already issued snow emergencies ahead of this storm. The town of Waterford has issued an emergency for all roads beginning at 9 in the morning. Everyone's asked to park in their driveways or to follow the posted signs. And in Greenport, there is no on-street parking from midnight until noon on Saturday. Cars violating those snow emergencies will be ticketed and towed. And if you'd like more information on the snow emergencies, you can head to our website at cbs6albany.com. And while you're there, sign up for those breaking news text alerts and check out the radar and stay on top of all the possible school closings tomorrow. 
if, of course, your school is in session to begin with. Well, for the first time in 20 years, there is a new mayor in the city of Albany tonight. Kathy Sheehan sworn into office today. Our Jennifer Lukey was at the swearing-in ceremony and spoke with the new mayor about her goals and how she plans to execute them. This is the beginning of a new era today. This is Mayor Sheehan's era, a new day. It starts today. And with that... Mayor Kathy Sheehan. The new mayor, with her son and husband by her side, took the oath of office. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the office of the mayor of the city of Albany. Of the mayor of the city of Albany. Of Kathy Sheehan is just the fourth person in 72 years to lead the city of Albany. <laughs> Much has been said about the fact that I am the first woman mayor of Albany in its 328 year history. While I hope that ultimately I am judged by the work that I do, I know that it is important for women to lead. I also know that I didn't shatter this glass ceiling by myself. It was chiseled away at by women who came before me and by those who believe that diversity in government leads to better government. She and quickly got down to business. The first item on her agenda is the city's finances. With a $16 million deficit and no rainy day fund, the situation is urgent. We need to work together to really get our budget under control. We have some serious fiscal challenges, but we also have a lot of talent in this city, a lot of great ideas, and I'm going to be working with our workforce and with our residents to really put us on a path to financial sustainability. In order to do that, she'll also have to work with the Albany Common Council. Half of the members sworn in today are brand new, too. We all have to develop a different type of relationship with her, even me as president of the council. We don't always agree, and we've said that over the years that we've worked together with her as treasurer. We don't always agree on all the issues that affect our city, but we agree to disagree and move on and tackle the issues that confront all the people of the city. The city and perhaps the county too. Albany County Executive Dan McCoy says he's already had discussions with the new mayor about consolidating services to try and save money. Give her some time, let her grow. It's going to take, she's going to have to absorb a lot in, even though she spent tre treasure for the last four years. It's different on this side of the table. And Mayor Sheehan will be at that table first thing tomorrow morning. In Albany, Jennifer Lukey, CBS 6 News. We should also mention that five-term former mayor Jerry Jennings was on hand for today's inauguration for Sheehan. Uh, the crowd also took a moment before Sheehan was sworn in to give him a standing ovation. Well, it's also a new day today in Saratoga Springs. Democrat Joanne Yepsen sworn in as the new mayor of the spa city. She won a tight race against Republican Deputy Mayor Shauna Sutton. Yepsen previously served as four-term Saratoga Springs supervisor, and she says she's not wasting any time in getting right down to business. Well, we're making our appointments today, official, and we will also have a number of issues in the first 100 days that we're going to tackle. Um, and we're, we're going to make city government much more transparent and open, as I promised in the campaign, and we're going to look to create a much more sustainable future for our city's planning and create a sustainability plan. Yepsen says that she plans to be a proactive mayor and will build on the previous success of the city. Detroit police say that vandals are causing some serious damage with, of all things, marbles. Another incident was confirmed today in Lansingburg. Two vehicles along 3rd Avenue had their windows completely shattered. On Saturday night in Rensselaer and Saratoga counties, four homes and two cars were damaged. Police tell us that there are also now victims in Pittsfield as well. And Jennifer Mullen has more. I came out Sunday morning to go on some errands and, you know, just by chance, you know, I thought it was frost at first, and then when I went to, you know, see how bad it was to have to scrape it off, that's when I realized that the whole window was just totally spidered right out. It wasn't exactly what Harold Grimm pictured for his Sunday. This little neck of the woods is really isn't that bad, you know, for the most part. Over the weekend, residents were left with damage caused by marbles. Troy police say the culprit or culprits could be using a slingshot, maybe even a paintball gun. Two vehicles along 3rd Avenue in Lansingburg had their windows completely shattered, and they were not alone. We haven't touched base with Pittsfield yet as to what's going on up there, but if we see a consistent pattern of the same projectile, which in this case seems to be the marbles, uh, it would be very fair to assume that whoever's responsible may live in Pittsfield and been down to Troy on Saturday night or vice versa. Luckily, Harold was able to get his back window fixed right away. Another victim down the street 
Not as lucky. I got a phone call saying that my glass was hitting off, you know, and I came down and that's what it was. Rose Gill spent her day cleaning up shattered glass with her husband. We got to cover it until we can get it fixed. And seeing that it's New Year's, nobody's around. Police tell us there was no effort to steal from any of the vehicles involved. They say it's just senseless vandalism. It most likely is someone who got some type of gift around Christmas and decided to try it out. But unfortunately, their attempts at trying out their gift could lead them down the road of a felony arrest if they are caught. The Gills have since vacuumed their car and they searched very closely for any evidence, but still no signs of any marbles or anything at all that could have shattered their windows. What if it was their, their property? and stuff. People can't afford stuff like this anymore. For now, police plan on stepping up their patrols in the necessary areas. They say cases like this are hard to crack. I think the fun needs to stop and, and hopefully we can get the message out that this uh, needs to stop immediately. In Lansingburg, Jennifer Mullen, CBS 6 News. And anyone with information is asked to contact police. And in the meantime, they're asking you to be aware of your surroundings. Report any suspicious activity or noise immediately. And this Albany man you're about to see is in trouble tonight after investigators say they found him at the Empire State Plaza after hours. State police say 46-year-old Daniel Fuentes was found hiding on the 17th floor of Agency Building 3 after it closed for the day. Fuentes now faces a trespassing charge. He's being held in the Albany County Jail. Well, with the new year comes the race to have the first baby born in 2014. And so far, the Capital Region's first baby was born at St. Mary's Hospital in Amsterdam. Baby Jeremiah, born just before 2.15 this morning. St. Mary says Jeremiah and mother are both doing well tonight. Well, today's cold certainly didn't keep more than a thousand people from taking part in this New Year's Day tradition. They took to the icy waters of Lake George for the 2014 Polar Plunge. The event held back at Shepherd Beach Park this year after taking a year off from that location. An infestation of invasive Asian clams was behind it being moved to Million Dollar Beach last year. That annual tradition began in the early 1970s, not for the faint of heart. <laughs> well, I heard that the water temperature today was 42 degrees and the air temperature, I think, was maybe in the 20s if it was that warm. But with the wind chill and everything, those people are not just brave. <laughs> They are beyond brave. There's I'm another word for them, but we'll just call them brave for now. <laughs> we'll leave it at that for now, yes. Oh, either that or we're cowards, all right? Yeah, <laughs> Maybe that's a, a better both. way of putting it. I think it. that's true. Well, increasing your chances of being tapped. Could the type of phone that you have make you a target for the National Security Agency? And mayhem in Minneapolis. What happened that led to over a dozen people being injured and many more without a home to start the new year? And stay right there. Chief Meteorologist Steve LaPointe will be here next with your CBS 6 Instant Doppler forecast. And we're also going to take a look at some of your trouble spots on the ride home. CBS 6 Ion Traffic is brought to you by Hudson Valley RV and Boat Show at Hudson Valley Community College, January 2nd through the 5th only. Free admission and free parking. First day of the new year, and I think a lot of people are just sitting this one out at home. You're looking at the commute tonight, and this is I-90 at Everett Road, and you can see that there is very little traffic out there. Yeah, certainly not surprising. Up next, we head to the north way at uh, exit 7. All right, so some cars out there, maybe some folks heading home on this uh, New Year's Day, but things moving along pretty smoothly. We'll check out the I-90 uh, State Campus exit, and you'll see no problems to report, and I think we have neglected to wish everybody a happy new year. Uh, you know, I believe Just you're right about that. <laughs> happy new year. So Hope it's off to a good start for you. Yeah. Weather-wise, quiet so far. Quiet so far, but things definitely going to be changing like we said off the top, and uh, Steve can tell us a little bit more about what to expect starting tonight. Steve? Yeah, Dorian, Liz, it looks like a particularly long, harsh period of both snow and cold. Snow is one thing, but when you uh, factor in extremely cold air, which is what will be coming into this storm, it kind of makes things rather exceptionally unpleasant. This is how it's going to play out. Light snow will be developing as we move through the night tonight. Initially, it's really slow to start. Just some flurries around this evening. I think things will start to get a little bit better organized after midnight, and maybe not even until 1, 2 o'clock in the morning when patchy light snow will tend to expand in coverage. Uh, cold temperatures, so the snow that does fall is going to fluff up. So by 9 to 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, a general 2 to 4 inch accumulation is fairly likely. And right through the day tomorrow, it's going to snow 
The intensity will be fairly light through the day, so snowfall rates of a half an inch per hour or less. But again, because it will be so bitter, uh, that snow will tend to fluff up. In fact, in terms of the cold, I'm only expecting daytime temperatures to generally range from 5 to 10 degrees, with wind chills at times running from 5 to 15 below. And that's during the day tomorrow, and that's with a north wind between 10 and 20. These wind chills will drop even further tomorrow night as temperatures head for zero with more snow. Wind chills down as low as 15 to 20 degrees below zero, and potentially as low as 25 below coming up on Friday with Friday's high temperatures between 2 and 8. So what we have outside in terms of the cold right now is a cakewalk compared to what's coming. The wind on Friday likely reaching its strongest with gusts up to about 35 miles an hour. Snow, though, should wind down Friday morning. So by the afternoon, things will quiet down a bit. Maybe we'll get some late day sunshine. So an extended period here of snow, at least 36 to maybe 40 or 42 hours. And it still looks like it's going to be a general 8 to 12 inch snow accumulation pretty much across the board. There won't be that much variation, although some pockets of potentially heavier snow may develop in spots. We'll know that when we actually see it forming during the event. So some locations may come in with as much as 15 inches. It's a lot, but again, keep in mind it's spread out over a long period of time. Here's the cold, which is banked up to our north, and a piece of it is breaking off and heading south. And the temperature contrast zone is now setting up down in here, south of Columbus into the Washington area, where the very cold air meets the milder conditions. And that's where low pressure will be generating weak ones that will track from west to east, and those lows will start throwing moisture up and over the increasingly cold air we have here at the surface. That's called an overrunning pattern, and that will produce the snow. We've got a strip of it now, northeast Pennsylvania, right back through Detroit and Chicago. It's been accumulating back in here as the Arctic front is now drifting across our region. And again, as these weak waves track to our south, this snow shield will gradually expand and lift north with time. But right now, there's very little on the radar, just some patches of flurries across the Catskills and the Mid-Hudson Valley, starting to pick up towards Binghamton and across the Poconos. And again, that very gradual trend will continue as we move through the evening and the overnight. So by 10 o'clock, some patches of light snow around. Again, as we head through 1, 2 o'clock in the morning, that's when things will really start to expand a bit in coverage. Snowfall should pick up, so it does look pretty sloppy and slow uh, for the morning drive coming up tomorrow, again with very cold temperatures. Right now, 21 at Albany, 30 at Poughkeepsie, but teens now at Glens Falls and Rutland, single digits at Burlington and Saranac Lake. So again, that cold will be drawn south as those waves of low pressure track to our south. So by morning, we're into the mid-single digits. That north wind really will drain the cold air down the Hudson Valley. So valley area is colder, higher spots likely in the teens by morning, and there won't be much temperature change at all tomorrow. Might pop a couple of degrees and then start to drop once again through the afternoon. So 8 o'clock Thursday morning, weak lows to our south. Arctic air in place. Overrunning flow keeps the snow going. Pretty much an all-day event. Might start to pick up a bit in intensity late in the day, and especially Thursday night. We'll see some moderate snow at that point, pulling out Friday morning, and then the brutal cold will uh, come in with the strongest winds, I think, coming up on Friday. Wind, though, should diminish Friday night, and that would mean the coldest temperatures of the season down to around 10 below Saturday morning, then we'll moderate to near 30 Sunday into Monday, but likely be dealing with some more snow or mixed precipitation and then more brutal cold following that early next week. Yeah, that's nothing I'm really happy to see, no. any of that. Yeah, well, you know, well, we'll get through it, and, um, you know, we've seen worse around here, I think we can all say. It's been a while, obviously. Yeah. And we have to get through it again. I hope everybody gets through the snow safely, safely. because that's the thing. If that gets on the ground, it's going to be so hard because it's going it. to be so cold to move it along. Yeah. Anyhow, we'll do our best, and Steve will be along to tell us what's happening. He certainly will. Well, we have more to come here. Uh, Pre-planted software. Yeah, why well, some say that certain smartphones have programs in them that allows the NSA to spy on you more easily. An explosion and large fire left 13 people hurt and many more homeless to start 2014. Several apartments burned this morning in downtown Minneapolis. So far, there were no reported deaths, but many of the injuries are quite serious. They range from everything from burns to injuries that people suffered while jumping from windows. Firefighters say that the weather did play a major role in fighting that fire. A lot of everything. You can imagine they pulled up on a tough scene. They tried to make entry. They did the best they could with what they had. Obviously, a lot of victims they had to deal with initially, plus a heck of a lot of fire. And, and under very treacherous conditions with all the ice that's out here now, it is like trying to uh, work on a skating rink. So it's very, very difficult with the cold and the ice. They still haven't figured out what started the fire. Officials not sure if there are any more victims, though, trapped inside the debris. 
Well, can the type of phone that you own lead to more or less of a chance of being tapped by the National Security Agency? If the NSA was using iPhones as a surveillance device, Apple says they didn't know about it. Sharon Chin reports now on the program that could reportedly give the government complete access to the popular smartphone owned by millions. Imagine your iPhone a tool for the NSA. Using a software program already planted in the smartphone, the federal agency can allegedly control it remotely to steal messages, harvest contact information, and secretly record audio. Tech analyst Rob Enderly. Supposedly they placed an application inside the iPhone during its assembly and configuration, and that program then allowed them to access the phone. Cupertino-based Apple says it did not cooperate with the NSA and had no idea their surveillance program existed, reportedly as far back as 2008. A cybersecurity researcher exposed the program in a German news magazine. Enderly says the iPhone is an easy target for NSA hackers because Apple maintains consistency in its products. You really don't change it very much. Uh, over time and that allows an application to stay in place and function much longer than it would someplace else. Apple said it would continue to defend its customers from hackers no matter who they are. Well, a new year and an old accomplishment. Coming up where the first commercial flight took place 100 years ago today.